when the pandemic hit last year, OnlyFans took off in a big way. Her name dropped the company in her latest collaboration with DJ called We Going Crazy and even Bayos took to the platform. It is not every day that Bayon's name drops a company, especially one with so much stigma still around it. So we decided to dive really deep into the story of OnlyFans and its fascinating founder, Tim Stokely. To understand how Tim Stokely came about founding OnlyFans, we need to rewind the clock just a little bit, 10 years to be exact. Tim S. Aha moment came from stumbling upon subreddits about financial dominance and realizing how much money people were paying for these experiences. Yet no one was building content specifically for them. Tim reached out to his family for some seed money in the tens of thousands of dollars and aggregated those videos from every corner of the internet to create the ultimate financial dominance tube site Glamourship. The comments section of Glamourship evolved into a mini eBay with viewers offering some serious money in exchange for acting out their wildest financial dominance fantasies. Many of the performers jumped on the opportunity to add a new revenue stream and a whole cameo for financial dominance economy started to shape. The sad reality was this new mini economy powered by Twitter plus Venmo took place right under Glam Worship S nose. The site turned into a distribution channel to these performers and the real money came in from those special video requests. You come into Glam Worship, you see something you like, you reach out to the performer on Twitter, put in your request, pay them on Venmo or PayPal, and they send you the video. He folded Glam Worship and started an entirely new company to capture some of those economics. Instead of going through this dance of finding the performer on Twitter, reaching out and arranging payments, Customs Fur did all the legwork and sprinkled in a little bit of trust in an industry which was still is not very well known for its trustworthiness. The common thread between 121 With and Customs Fur was that the entire business was built around understanding and monetizing the creator-fan relationships. After a year with little to no success, Tim made his comeback to the adult entertainment industry that some may even argue is the second greatest business comeback Falling just short of Steve Jobs' S return to Apple in 1997, around that time, Instagram was gaining a ton of steam and many adult entertainers would be using it to post pictures and videos to promote themselves. Tim had an insight why not build a paid social feed similar to Instagram and Twitter that allows these creators to safely capture the value of their content. In 2016, Tim launched the MVP of OnlyFans with 10 creators. The business model was simple fans had to pay a subscription fee ranging from $5 to $50 a month to view a creator as feed. Only fans took 20% of the cut and the rest went to the creator. It got the industry insights of customers wanting to directly pay performers for special video requests from Glamourship, the initial customers from his Customs for a mailing list, and the business model from 121 with. 